Hello and welcome to LetMeBoreYouToSleep.com This is Let Me Bore You To Sleep My name is Jason Newland And please only listen when you can safely close your eyes So, what I thought I would do today Is read through the paper Now I use newspapers. I don't normally read them. I use them for what I feel that they should be used for. I put them on the floor so that Andre can poo on them and do wee-wees. I think that's probably the best use for newspapers that they possibly could be. So that's what I do is when I go on a bus I grab a couple of newspapers, the free ones, and then I, yeah, you know, I use it for that for Andre to poo on. And I've got a neighbour that also gives me papers and stuff. But what I thought I would do is I don't normally do this. I don't normally even look at them, but occasionally I do. Sometimes I will. I'll, you know, I'll look down and I think, well, that's, that's, that looks interesting. Um, but there's problems with that because the news, newspapers are separated and the pages are separated. So, like, sometimes I have to try and find the pairing piece of paper that goes with it so I can read the full story. And then they're sort of trying to see the print through his poo. So it's, you know, it's not always easy. So I got this one, it's called the Free Metro. And you get it on, I think you get it on trains, buses, stuff like that. And I should also just let you know. um, This podcast, what what is it about? But it's about me boring you so that you can just drift off to sleep. That's one purpose. Another purpose can be it's just a bit of company. I can be, you know, it's an hour of just me talking and it's like a familiar voice, you know? That's why I do the same voice every time, so it's familiar. Otherwise, I'd sort of be coming on going, Hello, welcome to Let Me Boy You To Sleep. And then tomorrow I'll be, Oh, well, I let me have boy you to sleep, and this is our Jason Newland. And it just wouldn't be familiar, would it? So I guess by having the same voice every time, it's uh, kind of a familiar experience. Not familiar as in... A witch is familiar, but uh, so yeah, this is the free metro. Uh, oh, by the way, this podcast, this this particular podcast, there's a hundred and ninety five hours of me talking. Absolute rubbish! It's amazing. One hundred and ninety five hours recorded. And all together, throughout all my podcasts, there's over a thousand hours, probably 1,200 hours of me (laughs) talking. So yeah, that's through over a thousand recordings since 2006, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6. Right, so the front cover, I don't know what's going on here. This, this big advert has got Sky Cinema, Premier League, Netflix, BBC Player, or iPlayer, and it's just the Sky, YouTube, Spotify, Sky One. That's covering the whole of the front page. Where's the newspaper then? Where's all the news? Where's the sports and the features? I mean, usually the, the metro is packed with news, sport, and features, and there's nothing. It's just 
like one big advert on the front. Oh, wait a minute, there's a thing at the top. Oh, it says your regular Metro packed with news, sport and features inside. Oh, I've got to turn the page over. Oh, there it is. Blimey. I was getting worried there. Can you imagine, I imagine a lot of people were like picking it out and thinking, where's the paper? Where's the newspaper? It's normally packed with news, sport and features, but it's just, it's just one big advert. Then they realise you've got to turn the page over. I'll get rid of that. It's literally, it's got the same advert on the front and on the back. It's for Sky Q. That can go away. So I don't have, I did get a newspaper today, but it is already being used by Andre. So this paper is from Friday, July 26, 2019. Let's have a look, what does it say? It says free metro. Look, see I sometimes wonder, I think, I just, I wonder how popular now, I sometimes think, well, how popular is the Metro? So give it away free. But, oh, it just says, hey, look, the world's most popular free newspaper. Now, I can't really make a joke about something being popular because it's, you know, it's free. You're giving it away. But then that's what I do, isn't it? I give away my stuff, so I should uh, keep that view to myself. Oh, there's another advert. Pull a switcheroo to Google Pixel. Switch to Google Pixel 3a or 3a XL with unlimited data, no upfront cost from. So there's no apostrophe there, it's just. or comma, it's no upfront cost from. £32 a month for 24 months with unlimited data. Wow. That's not bad, is it? £32 a month for 24 months with unlimited data. Do you know how much I pay? I'm with EE. And it's a pay as you go. I've got an iPhone, which I had on a contract. And I paid for the contract to be paid off because I don't use the phone enough uh, to just, just didn't want to be in contract anymore. So I got rid of that. I've got an EE SIM card. I pay five pound a month. And for that, I get, it's, it was started off just being basic. I had it a year now. And it's unlimited Texas. Um, probably 150 minutes talk time and perhaps one gigabyte data. But every three months, I get a chance to boost so I get a boost every three months I can boost either the data or the minutes so I've just been doing the minutes and now though because I think I started using uh, the data a bit more when I'm outside so I think I'm going to boost it next month to get more, I don't know how, I think it's like 500 gigabytes, which isn't huge, but it adds up over, you know, it's two gigabytes a year added. 
so I think I'll do that for the next year because I don't talk on the phone very much because I don't really like talking when another person is interrupting me I like to just talk without interruption and you know I get to choose what's being said and yeah I prefer that two-way communication I just just seems unnecessary sometimes you know one-way communication I don't have to talk about anything I don't want to talk about so it's good so what's this meltdown number one Brussels fury at Johnson's unacceptable plan for Brexit uh, so meltdown at number two. Oh, look they're doing like a, a kind of I don't know they just use number one and number two for two different stories Britain has its hottest July day ever and it's pure misery for computers. Computers? Commuters. Well, apparently, just saw it on the news tonight or early hours, a couple, couple of hours ago, that last week, well, I don't know what day it was, Thursday, I think, was actually, I think it was in Cambridge, and it was the hottest day we've ever had on record. Yeah, exciting stuff. So what's next? Let's have a look. Oh, oh they got a picture of a, a Buckingham Palace guard with his eyes closed and he looks like he's sleeping. But those big hats they wear, it's got to be hot under there, isn't it? Mind you, they are big enough to have a little fridge. Or not a fridge, but you know, you know those, um, those cooler boxes you get where you can put food in, but there's like a compartment underneath where you can put those ice packs that you, like, I guess they're just full of water. They're plastic and you put in the freezer and then you put them underneath in an like, unzip it or whatever compartment and it keeps your sandwiches and your juicy drinks and you know such and such nice and cool so maybe he's got some of those on his head underneath the hat maybe it's like a like a little scalp structure maybe it's actually built into the hat I don't know. I and mean, I don't know what his name is. It's not like I can kind of ask him. Unless it says his name in the article. But doesn't. It just lists all the different places around Europe. And the temperatures. Oh. And they've got their they got the headline meltdown number two. But I think they, they looked at the picture of the Buckingham Palace guard and although he's got his eyes shut, he could be sweating, it's hard to know. It's just a headshot. And you know, it's kind of Partly, it's sort of, well, it's your own fault. It's your own fault for wearing that thing, you know? It's sort of self, self-induced. It's, it's it, it, you know, it's like walking around in a, I don't know, just a fur coat or something. It's like, oh, well, yeah, it's going to be hot, isn't it? So they probably thought, well, we're not sure if that's really given the correct picture 
to really explain and describe the heat. So they put another picture and it's uh, underneath it says stifling the London underground and then splash next to it for some reason and it's got a lady um, wiping her forehead so I'm guessing I mean that that might be completely unrelated to the heat you know she might just be a messy eater or something you know and she's looking down at her mobile phone which I'm guessing she's using as a mirror So what's next? What's the next page? Oh, it's another big advert. And it's also for mobile phone. Unlimited fiber from £24.50 per month. Oh, it's not, it's, it's broadband. It's not a mobile phone at all. Unlimited fibre extra from £27.50. Uh, oh, uh, <laughs> now there's a picture here that you. Oh, so they're continuing the. Oh, it's hot. So it's a hot on page two. So the, this one's a picture of some police people looking at a crowd of people and and it's it says cool it everyone please keep watch on a large crowd queuing at Brockwell Lido or Lido in South East London it says but I mean they could be doing anything they could just be standing there they're having a lot of statue contest. And then there's another picture next to it of an underground tube. And it's got, it says underneath, just the pits. A man goes shirtless on a hot tub carrying carriage in London. What a hot tube. So there's a man there without a top on with his arm up and yeah unfortunate oh they, they've got a bit of puns here so that just the pits oh yeah it's got it and then there's another lady this is again oh just in a funny picture there's another lady and she's just holding her eyes and just looking down and she's standing on a tube and uh, this time there's because it's it's on the central line so this is the headline for that one central heating line so that's 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 funny um, and there's a picture of a man sitting on a train on his laptop and he's got his top off sometimes that is a quite a good way to cool off isn't it by taking your top off you know it's I don't think it's I think it's really down, it's like prejudice really, isn't it? If someone looks really good with their top off, no one complains. You know, if they have an Adonis body like mine, people applaud and quite often throw confetti in the air and, you know, carry me on their shoulders down the street. But, take me to the police station. Oh look, there's also a man on a virgin train stuck outside London Euston Station 
has helped on to another service. All right, some trains broke down because of the heat. So we're now on page three and they're still talking about the weather. This is England, everybody. Now there's a picture of a beach. Uh, packed in, it says, crowds of bathers on Bournemouth Beach try to keep cool. So that's that's nice. Um, but how do they know that people are trying to keep cool? Maybe some people are actually... Looks like there's quite a few people sunbathing. And if you're trying to keep cool, why would you lay down in the sun? You know, just... just. Oh, look. And they found a lady in a deck chair as well. And it says, hot as hell. Scorching heat sends trains and tempers off the rails. And it says, soaking up the sun, a woman on a deck chair in St. James Park, London. For some reason. Now I realise why they've got so many adverts. It's not... It's not a case if they've got the adverts for to you know to pay for the paper, but it's to give the customers something to read. So big DFS savings celebrate fifty years, seven hundred and ninety nine pound after event. Oh, uh, un underneath after event. One thousand two hundred and seventy nine pound. Why not just give it for seven if just why not just yeah if it's celebrating fifty years, why don't they hold it for a whole year? We could do this for a year, not just for the weekend. Mind you, it doesn't say. What does it say? Okay. After event price applies from the 28th, 0819. Uh, that's the 28th of August, 19. Um, not the 19th, 19... Nine. Yeah, it's not the nine. It's the nineteenth. It's twenty eighth of August. Not the nineteenth of August. Nineteen twenty eight. So now I'm going to turn the page over again, and it does make a crinkly sound. But if you can find an easier way to turn a paper without it making a sound, then be my guest and uh, send me a lovely message. Maybe make a little video for me to show me how to do it. And I can ignore it. Oh, there's another advert. Be unlimited with amazing 5G. Vodafone. The future is exciting. Ready, it says, with a question mark. Well, I think I am. I'm enjoying these adverts. So this is a Samsung Galaxy 510 5G. I'll be honest with you. I like iPhones now. I've had a couple. I've had, yeah, I've only had two iPhones. I had one in, I think, my first iPhone. Because I've had lots of different mobile phones since... 1998 was the first mobile phone I got and it was I think it was a Motorola and it had it had an aerial that came out and I used to pull out the aerial with my teeth and I used to dangle it dangle, not dangle that sounds weird doesn't it I used to like 
dangle the phone and hold on to the aerial because the aerial had a little knob, like a little knob at the end of it. So I used to put my knob in my mouth and I used to just um, swirl it around. And I used to do that at bus stops. I don't know why, I just, I think it's something to do while I'm waiting for a bus. And I also used to talk really loudly on a mobile phone which is kind of like the cliche back then but I don't know why I th it's as if I was trying to show off that I had a mobile phone and they weren't new then you know what I mean it's like loads of people had mobile phones that's kind of the boom that's when they became really popular in like nine, probably 1997 96, 97 onwards but then I had that one um, then I had a an Ericsson which was like a flip a flip phone I wanted one of them because it was like Star Trek you know the thing when they click it open and beam us up Scotty yeah and I liked that. That appealed to me. And also I liked it because it was called an Ericsson. And my favourite hypnotist, uh, like a teacher, uh, is Milton Erickson, who is the most famous hypnotist in history, pretty much. For those of you that are mildly interested in that. So then... What other f yeah, so I got that. I got a. I had a few different phones because I was trying to start businesses up. And then nothing really happened there, but I was trying to. So I wanted different phone numbers and different phones and stuff like that. And then. In 2001, I had a job in a mobile phone company, um, and my job was selling tariffs, like mobile phone contracts, and given and people got the mobile phone free, which is pretty much the same as it's still it's the, still the same process really. So I got a mobile phone from them. They put I got one of their contracts, and it was called yeah, it was Orange I think at the time. Or was it was it Orange? I can't remember. I think so. And then two thousand and one, two thousand and two. Yeah, I got another phone. I think in two thousand and four which was another flip phone which I really liked actually it's a little thing and these were the days before um, you yeah, know like really good phones these were just for calling on and you could I think other phones were available where you could you know, take pictures and, um, and do things like that but and we had WAP, W-A-P, which was, that was the internet for phones back then. Don't know what it stands for. Um, I don't know. But I like that because I think it might have also had a an aerial as well. But I still remember, I wish I'd kept my phones. Just, because I just chucked them away or maybe given them away to people over the years. But I would have liked to just like, just put them down on the, on the table and, well, that's a bit of a waste of space really, isn't it? Keeping phones just so I can put them on the table, but just to kind of just see the different phones I've had. Because how many do you think I've had? Because I got that, 
2004 on a contract and then I'm not sure if I I think I got another phone in I might have had that same phone but I'm sure I got another phone in about 2005 no that phone I got it wasn't 2004 it was 2002 or 2003 but I think I got another one in about 2005 and when I started going to university in 2007 so I started in September I I think it was probably the end of the year probably December time maybe it was January 2008 I'm not sure but I got a contract phone and it was a what was that phone they were really popular like years ago um, not Bebop Luba that would be not Mercury um, they were used for like emailing and they were quite used for, by people that are business people and oh, what was it called but it was a really good phone um, like with a keyboard and it, you know it was Blackberry that's it so I got a Blackberry in 2008 or 2007 and then so I kept that and I think I possibly got I might have got another Blackberry I, I'm, I think what happened when the contract ran out after I think a year or two years I phoned them up phoned up the company who's EE or Orange or someone and they said to me oh we've got this this uh, I think it was LG phone and they said oh, it was really good and you can it's uh, like a smartphone I said, what? They said, it's a smartphone. I said, what, what's that then? They said, well, it's like an iPhone, but it's not an iPhone. I said, well, can I have an iPhone? They said, no, you can't. I said, why not? They said, well, we don't do them. I said, yeah, but they do exist, don't they? They said, yeah, obviously, otherwise we wouldn't be talking about it, would we? If you, you know, basically... It did have a state. I could have had an iPhone, but it was a different tariff and it was expensive. Although I was paying, I think I was paying about forty-nine pound a month. I think at one point I was paying about seventy pound a month for my mobile phone, but I had unlimited everything. Just a lot of money to be paying out, but hey, that's what I did for a while. And then um, they sent me this smartphone. And I'm sure it was an LD, L, not Audi, L, L for Lollipop and D for. Duh, whatever, I don't know. And the. I got it, and I. Because I, that, by that time I was so used to the. Blackberry even though the, you know the, the keyboard was too small for my thumb you know for my fingers and I haven't got massive fingers I probably you know, of course it's like this, the rest of my body really, really muscular and strong like Hercules but 
I had this, and it had a case. I had like this little brown or black like leather case thing that you slide into it, or slide it into rather. And I remember because I dropped it in the toilet. So yeah, that's that story. So, but then I got this LD phone. And I remember I got it delivered and. The person that delivered it, because I was living at the top of the house, if I remember correctly, I was living at the top of the house, or was I living somewhere else? This is getting muddled up now, I was living somewhere anyway, I definitely had somewhere to sleep, and when I got, I got the phone and I signed for it and... I think the man was rude to me for some reason. I think he... Yeah, I think he gave it to someone else. In the house. He just gave it to them. And I went out after him and said, You're supposed to get me to sign for this, aren't you? I mean, this is a... Quite an expensive phone and... It could have just gone walkies, you know, given it's well, not literally. But, you know, the like, more sliding, I think, than walking, but just, you know, and he, and he said, and he started, he got huffy with me, and I kind of left it there, really. But he, um, so I opened the box and it's very similar to an iPhone box just the same same kind of packaging and it was this flat thing I'd never even seen an iPhone off, apart from on television so this was a kind of similar flat thin design as an iPhone so it was a smartphone with a screen that you touched and all that stuff and I spent about half an hour with it and I phoned them up and I said take it away I don't like it can I please take it away and give me another Blackberry and uh, they said the person on the other side of it said so I think you've misdialed with a pizza pizza shop I said, oh, sorry and I said well, can you send me a pizza then as I'm on the phone they said use your Jason I said yes yes thanks um, so yeah, I got that, but they so they they were really good though because they came really quick. Well, they come back quick, but within a couple of days, they collected the phone and they replaced it with a BlackBerry. So I was kind of back to where I was, you know, and I was happy with that. But then maybe a year or two later again I think with the same company they said how do you fancy an iPhone and I thought hmm yeah I'm interested and the person on the other end of the phone said yeah but you didn't get on very well though, did you, with the smartphone we sent you last, two years ago? I said, how do you remember that? He said, oh, I don't, but it sounded like a good thing to say. I said, why, why, what do you mean? He said, well, this story is pretty boring, isn't it? I thought I'd just spice it up by pretending to remember you and being a bit critical, you know? I said, but yeah, but it's supposed to be boring. That's the point of the podcast. She said, what, what do you mean podcast? I said, yeah, it's a podcast. It's uh, Let Me Bore You to Sleep. It's uh, it's basically just me talking um, about anything, really, just for about an hour. And it's supposed to be boring. In fact, when I when I do it myself I actually sometimes struggle not to fall asleep and she said that's that's quite a good idea and she I could hear she 
she said wait a second now she thought she'd put me on mute but she hadn't and she was just laughing and she started telling telling one of her colleagues about it and I, I've got this knobhead on the phone he keeps talking about podcasts about talking boringly like I said oi excuse me she, but she she had it on mute but she couldn't hear me but I could hear her I don't think she quite got the the gist of the uh, system that she was operating but it was okay it worked out alright and uh, I got the iPhone and I didn't like it I kind of liked it but I didn't like it um I think the the first thing I noticed was the apps, you know, the the app store, and I like with games and stuff. And I thought, oh, and I I think I did what everybody probably does when they first get an iPhone or a smartphone is I um, sat on it. Now I I downloaded like every single possible app that they could be and I filled the memory up within about half an hour and I do a lot of things in half an hour it's amazing isn't it it's quite a nice sort of benchmark time zone half an hour see when I was younger I always used to say 10,000 a lot this you know this I don't know why, I used to, used to say it in a conversation, that used to be my my benchmark number, 10,000. The thing is, I can't remember a sentence where I would use it, but I have a vague memory of sitting in a kitchen of a friend, like a friend's kitchen, um, and sitting in there, and just talking and moaning and feeling sorry for myself and just waffling on and not being aware that I think she might have wanted me to leave um, I, well I don't know it's, it's hard I can't always read the signs but she kept pointing to the floor and I looked down and there was this big arrow, big like bright arrow that led, that led all the way to the front door, the door was open, a big sign, please leave now, so I don't know, I can't, I don't take hints very well, so I got that iPhone and I used to, once I started making videos for YouTube, and I, I was already making videos before, but I'd never used a phone to make videos. I'd always been using webcams and uh, a video camera in the past. So I started using the iPhone to make videos. And it was, I just really enjoyed it because it, the picture was really good if there was good light and the the sound was all right it was okay I had to get fairly close to get a decent sound or be in a like an echoey room but what I used to do I used to take and you'll see if you go on to my YouTube channel there's a lot of videos that I recorded with that iPhone and you see me in various different places. So there's one place that had beams on the on the wall, not on the ceiling. That was one therapy room that I that worked from. And I used to go in a bit early and make a one or two videos sometimes. And then another room that I worked in as a therapist, uh, as a counsellor. Uh, there's like I think like a tree or something behind me and I did my Jason I did my hypnotic no hypno chats videos in there quite a lot and 
I've got another video where I'm in a an office that I was volunteering in. I got videos that I did in like okay, my most popular video that I've ever made was the what was it called? Uh, try and stay awake. It's like an insomnia session, and it's got some music in the background. I made that recording in 2011, I think it was, and the yeah it was definitely 2011, so it's eight years ago, and the. Basically, where I was living at the time, it was just up the road from the Buddhist Center, and I used to use, I used to rent the therapy room that was behind the Buddhist Center. I used to rent that um, when I had clients, and I asked if it was okay for me to use that. It was like a, it's kind of like a porter cabin kind of thing. So it was quite nice, had a kitchen, toilet. Um, it's fairly, yeah, it was, it was like a bit cold in the winter. But it was, uh, yeah, it was fairly quiet at night. It was behind a pub, so it wasn't quiet in the evening. But once the pub closed, it was you know, quiet. So I asked, would it be all right William, I don't know whose name it was. I said, "Would it be all right if I use this room in the middle of the night when there's no one around? You know, sort of midnight, eleven o'clock, whatever." Now I could have just used it anyway because I had a key, but I just, you know, out of courtesy, just to check that they were okay with it. And they said, "Yeah, as long as no one else is using it." So that's what I did. I just used to go in there. I made quite a few recordings in there, like videos. And you can see, if you go to my YouTube channel, I think there's a curtain behind me on one of the videos, like a brown curtain with stars or something. And there's another, the one with the, the try and stay awake. That is, that was in that room as well. Plus I've, I've recorded myself in, yeah, I've even made videos when I was at my dad's house. I've made videos like YouTube video, hypnosis videos in, not just on the phone, but you know, different places. So. I made videos at the, where was it? Right, well, I used to live in a Buddhist community, so I used to make my videos there using a the webcam. So that was in 2006 to 2007, November 2007. So that was that period. And then from then, when I was at, did I make videos anywhere else during that time? No, probably not. And then I moved and I started making videos in 2007, 8, 9, 10, whatever, so, so while I was in that place. Made quite a few in that room, the bedroom. Also made quite a few outside in the hallway because there was this like dining area that um, when everyone was asleep or in bed I'd go in that bit and I'd just turn the light on and I'd make a video uh, so that it was a bit I, if it was quiet enough that would be quite cool so I made a few videos there uh, where else I think I might have made a couple at the kitchen table when the, my landlord and landlady were on holiday so I've made, made, probably made a couple of hypnosis videos there. I did lots of my vlogs, 
like even outside or in different places as well but there most of them are gone and so what other places did I used to do it I don't know I don't think I made any videos at college no I'm pretty sure I didn't But then I moved to the other place, I made lots of videos there. And when I lived at the top of the house, and I think I used a video camera at that time. And then when I got, I went through a period when I would, because I had an ensuite room, so I had a uh, cost me £125 a week that was back in 2011 a lot of money £125 a week for it was a nice room I can't complain about this it's a nice size and everything plus an ensuite bathroom bathroom was nice it didn't work properly but you know £125 a week is a lot of money but I used to put the camera on above the sink and sometimes I'd make I went through a period when I made a video every day for probably about a month and it was just short like self development motivational videos so I did that and it was very bright as well because it's a, a very bright in there but probably a little bit too echoey but I was you know, quite was quite pleased at the time and then I moved again and I the way I lived then was in a basement literally but a damp basement but I made quite a few videos there but it's very dark uh, I got I actually bought like a bunch of lights like really bright lights to try and brighten the room up but it was difficult because it was so small and it was so there was no hardly any sunlight getting in well there was no sunlight getting in there at all there was light as in light but the sun wasn't shining in there because the sun was just too high in the sky um, so it didn't get a lot of light it's hard to explain it but it was it wasn't just basement but there was like a garden raised above the window as well so it was when you looked out you could only see the top of the window bit where people would walk past and you could see their knees so I made quite a few in there but it was very again it was wasn't conducive but I did tr still try and like plough onwards and then because I had a, I had an iPhone then and then I moved here and when I first moved here I had I think I had the old iPhone I think well I might have had a different phone I might have just I'm not sure no I didn't have an iPhone I had a Xperia a Sony Xperia and I bought it especially because it's supposed to it was supposed to have the best picture the, the best uh, camera out of all the phones so I I bought that specifically for that reason so that I could make the best quality videos and it just stopped working kept just shutting off and so I ended up having to get a different phone. 
So I ended up getting a Google phone. And that was really rubbish. That was a terrible phone. It just was... The ironic thing about it, and I couldn't believe it, is, and it might have just been this phone, it might not, not have anything to do with Google, just, no, not not Google phone, was it a Microsoft phone? Something like that. But it had trouble connecting to the internet. I mean, I've got broadband here. And I had to, I'm not sure, I am not. I might have had a contract, I don't remember. No, I, did, I think it was pay as you go. But it couldn't connect. It kept, like, cutting out. Whether it was Google or Microsoft, both of those. I think, I don't know if Google make a phone, but I think it was a Microsoft phone. How can it have trouble connecting to the internet? Microsoft. You'd think if any phone could connect to the internet, a Microsoft phone would. And then I got the phone that I've currently got, which I've had for probably two years. And it's an iPhone 7, I think. And... I pay five pound a month for the telephone, you know, for the for the SIM card that I put into it. So I don't I don't phone people that much. I make the occasional phone call when I'm waiting for a bus, but and occasionally I'll kind of have a little. I have a little boost of interest in other people. Yeah, it happens occasionally, and if I kind of ride that wave and phone family and stuff, but then I just I do. I've come to really like Apple for some reason. I've got a, a couple of Apple products, and they just link together so easily, and I quite like that. Um, but I can see the benefit of Android as well. So I've got a tablet, an Android tablet, and so there's there's benefits in all of them. I could see it if, if I had yeah, I, I could. I reckon ten years ago, if all this stuff was available, I probably would have been a bit of a techie. Or you know, going back not ten years, probably longer, two thousand and two, two thousand and three, when I had um, an okay income, I probably would have had an iPhone, and had I kind of got into it, I probably would have got a bit of that stuff. Got myself an iMac, but I never, never really thought about it at the time, because I was working so much. I spent most of my time working. But yeah, I'd I'd like to have an iMac and I've got a I've got a, a laptop. It's okay, it's just a standard what is it? It's a Dell. A Dell, it's eight megabytes. Not megabytes, yeah, eight, or is it eight gigabytes memory or something, or I don't know, but it's it's above average in a sense of I think four gigabytes is kind of the lower level, eight megabytes is a little bit better, but uh, and that's for the for the it's kind of like the engine uh, the process or I don't know it just means that unlike my other laptop it doesn't keep cutting out I don't think it's I don't think it's shut down on it's own it might have done but 
it hasn't done for a while but it is very minimum I don't have a lot of stuff on there I really only use it for editing audios um, uploading and like working on the websites I don't really use it for much more a little bit of research now and then but yeah so I don't I don't overuse it like perhaps I used to previous computers in the past I don't know why previous computers didn't need in the past added to it did it oh dear I can't believe I only got up to page 3 or page 5 oh well, never mind so basically that's it that's the mobile phone story I did have an iPad see a couple of years ago my internet I got rid of the in not it's a long time it's not a couple of years probably about five years ago I got rid of my phone and I got rid of the internet that's it got rid of the internet and it was so slow the internet was so slow I thought there's no point and get rid of it and then the phone company said well why don't you have an iPad you get the iPad free it is a contract but it's unlimited data and it's a special offer and it's only going to be £20 a month or something for 17 years and I thought alright then but I could never although it was an iPad Apple and all that stuff and that was before I don't know I just couldn't couldn't get on with it I just didn't I wasn't feeling it if that makes sense just didn't didn't really yeah and even with the with basically the Apple iPad that I had well, I still got it but it just don't work no more it's just because it's so old it's not compatible with uh, all the new apps and stuff it's just it just stopped working so which is a bit weird I don't know why but I've got um what is it, a Sony um, Android tablet and the reason I got that is because I wanted to be able to I'm aiming to write a book and I got basically what I do now is I buy stuff from the catalogue and then I'll pay it a month pay it, you know, pay it over like a year or ever pay it back because uh, I can't afford to buy stuff outright and it's quite a good way to get stuff that I need but I can't get everything because if I could I'd buy a new carpet and I'd get that on the on the catalogue but they don't sell carpets I'd like to go to university and get a, you know do some more courses but I can't get that on the catalogue either it's not fair I'd like a girlfriend but they don't do that on the catalogue but they do punch bags which is good I'm not, why am I, I'm not connecting getting a girlfriend with a punch bag I'm saying I bought I got a punch bag and I got that from the catalogue and and uh I think if my eyesight doesn't improve, I might have to get a bigger telly. Without my glasses, I can't see. It's just blurry, and it's not. It's not like a. It's not a small telly. I think it's about thirty-six inches. 
so it's, it's you know it's a big enough size for me and you couldn't fit it in your pocket that's, that's what I'm saying it's, it's quite a, but it's blurry it's weird anyway I'm going to go thank you for listening and uh, hopefully I've bored you enough to just drift off if not hopefully I've been a little bit of company for you take care and I'll speak to you next time bye bye bye